Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. We would like to welcome everybody here in the sanctuary and those who are watching online. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good... I don't know where you are, Ning, but we would like to welcome everybody to Shepherd Pasture Assembly. We are a Christ-centered, spirit-led, family-oriented church. We stand on the infallible Word of God, and we believe in the fruit and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Our mission is to reach the city of San Diego and the world through the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Our, our vision is to be a worshiping, praying, and evangelizing church, to be in depth with the Word, and to be a resting place. And if you like what you heard, then you are in the right place. And we would like to welcome all our first-timers. If, if it's your first time joining us here in the sanctuary and online, if it's your first time, we would like to welcome you to Shepherd Pasture Assembly. Uh, don't worry, we don't bite, but uh, we're, we're going to approach you, we're going to shake your hands, we're going to smile at you, we're going to greet you, and we're going to pray for you. But we, we welcome everybody. And just a quick um, house, house, um, house fixing um, announcements. On November 18, uh, that's a Thursday, it's our annual National City Police Department Thanksgiving. Um, it's a community feeding event in the NCPD parking lot. Um, NCCA will be providing all the turkeys and fixing. Uh, we are asking for church, uh, for the churches to contribute what they can. All, um, all are welcome and encouraged to participate by attending and helping uh, distribute the Thanksgiving dinners to the families who will drive up to and receive our act of love. If you would like to participate, um, be there 8.30 a.m. as the event starts at 9. So again, that's November 18. Mark it on your calendar. Thursday, November 18. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. November 18, Thursday, 8.30 a.m. We'll, we'll, um, we'll go to... Um, it's our annual National City Police Department. And Sunday, November 21. Say Sunday, November 21. It's our church Thanksgiving celebration. So after service, Brother Roger personally will feed all of us. He went up to me earlier and he said, I'm going to feed you all whole pig for everyone. I don't, he doesn't care if you don't eat pig. He's going to give you a whole pig. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it's going to be our church Thanksgiving um, um, celebration, November 21. So mark your calendars. Um, November 21 is our church Thanksgiving celebration. And after our service today, if you haven't um, gotten baptized yet in water, uh, we will have a baptism. Um, what time? Two o'clock. If you don't know, two o'clock, that's before 3 p.m. And after one. So be there. It's going to be at Pastor Rick's um, residence. If you need more information, just approach us after the service but are, are you guys excited to praise and worship are you excited to be in the house of the lord amen amen i would like to to read a scripture um i, I believe it's up there it's it's on psalm 63 verse 2 to 4 and i i, I just wanna i wanna i just wanna set the record straight because i've seen people tell me you know they, they always tell me i don't want i don't need to raise up my hands like i can worship god with my hands down all right let, let me read the let me read you a scripture psalm 63 verse 2 to 4 it says i have seen you this is king david i have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life my lips will glorify you. Does it end there? And in your name, I will lift my hands. Again, verse 4, I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, 
I will lift my hands. Because you see, raising up our hands is not a Pentecostal thing. It's a God thing. It's, it's, it's a scripture thing. <laughs> Sometimes we, 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 we try to, to categorize things. Oh, they're raising up their hands. Maybe they're, they're charismatic. Ah, I beg to disagree. Raising up our hands is, is in the scripture. So I, 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 I pray that that settles it. You know, if, if, you, if you don't believe a bald guy, I pray that you believe the scripture. So let's all stand up as, as we praise God today. And then... Look at the person right next to you and, and tell them, I am blessed that you are here. Now look at the person that you didn't choose and tell them, I'm also glad that you are here. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's give God praise in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Let, let's pray. Lord, we praise you and we honor you in this place. We are excited to give you praise. We are excited to give you glory for this is an honor and a privilege that not everybody has. So Lord, we treasure this freedom that we have. And Lord, we take it. We take full owner, owner, ownership of this, oh God. And as we worship you, Lord, we pray that you show your face upon us, oh God. Meet us in this place. Lord, we pray, God, that let every heart bow down before you. Let every hands be raised. Let every voice shout your name. Lord, we set aside any distraction as we worship you, Lord. You are the center of everything that we're doing. And we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we give God praise? Can we give God praise? Amen, amen. Let's praise Him. Captured my heart with this love 
Cause there's nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Come on, sing! Beautiful Come on, church! Beautiful one, I adore Beautiful one, my Let your soul sing today Oh, beautiful one, beautiful one, I love Beautiful one, I adore Beautiful one, my soul must sing Come on My soul, my soul, my sing Come on, clap your hands My soul, my soul, my sing My soul, my soul, my sing Beautiful one, join me. My soul, my soul, my sing. My soul, my soul, my sing. My soul, my soul, my sing. Beautiful one, beautiful one. Now come on. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Come on, sing, beautiful. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Come on, sing, beautiful one. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Let me hear the voices together with the drums. Come on, beautiful one, sing. Beautiful one, come on. And I adore. Beautiful one, I think you can do better than that. Let's do that one more time. Sing beautiful one, beautiful one. Sing beautiful. My soul, my say, be beautiful one. Yes, Lord, we will sing. And I adore, be beautiful one. One more time. Beautiful one, beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Be- last time, for the last time. Mercy. Come on, give him praise. Whoa. You are beautiful. And worthy, worthy of our praise. You worthy, you worthy. Come on, church, give him praise. Oh, 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 My soul, my soul, my sin, 
chapter 15 verse 4 it says who will not fear you Lord and bring glory to your name for you alone are holy all nations will come and worship before you for you are righteous for your righteous acts have been revealed. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name. Today, I would like to challenge you. We're going to sing about the holiness of God. And, and this morning, during our worship team devotion, I would like to speak to you, church. You know, sometimes when the worship leader starts to, to talk, you begin to look around. But I want to I wanna look at you and tell you, you know, there's something about when we sing about His holiness. Because see, love, singing the love and the grace of God is... I, I told Brother Jun, it's easy sometimes because we know we've fallen short and we know we sin. But to be honest, personally, sometimes it's difficult for me to sing about His holiness. Because it, I get confronted with the fact that I am unholy. Did you hear what I'm saying? That this, He is a holy God. That I am singing to. And all have fallen short. And here we are. That's why the verse, Who shall not fear you and bring glory to your name? So today, I want to challenge you as we sing the holiness of God. To lay down every burden, every sin, every idol that you have. today as we worship
Lift up your eyes, all of heavens in worship. Angels rejoice, and the clouds will be filled with the wonder of your name. With the wonder of your name. The train of his robe fills the temple with glory. Heavenly hosts fall before him in worship, crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. So I see heaven. I see heaven before me Angels passing around me Here I stand Angels rejoice and the clouds will be filled with the wonder of your name. Yes, Lord, with the wonder of your name. Oh, the train of his robe fills the temple with glory. Heavenly host fall before him and worship. Crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. So lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes, all of heavens in worship. Angels rejoice, and the clouds will be filled with the one.
Psalms 99 verse 5 says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His footstool. He is holy. You know, the Western, the Western church sometimes, instead of bowing in awe, at the majesty and the glory of God, we casually sing our songs to Him. That sometimes we lose that mystery and awe of who God is. That we repeat things over and over and over every Sunday that we lose the mystery and the wonder of who God is. And as I look upon you today, church, 
Do you still have that awe in God? Do you still have that mystery that, Lord, you are holy? See, only God is independently, infinitely, immutably holy. He alone is holy. And so, I want to challenge you today. If you've been doing things and you've been just casually singing and just casually doing things, doing things just one two three one two three and just be done with it and you've lost that sense of mystery and awe and fear of God I want to challenge you today to look beyond to look deeper to God God of wonders beyond a galaxy, you are holy, holy, come on, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. God of wonders beyond a galaxy. Oh, come on. You are holy and holy. The universe, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. God of wonders. And God of wonders beyond a galaxy. Oh, come on, raise up your voices. And you are holy, yes, Lord. And holy, the universe declares your majesty. Yes, Lord. You are holy, yes, Lord. Holy. God of wonder, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. Oh, let it rise in this place. You are holy and holy. Yeah. The universe declares. Oh, we declare. We declare your majesty. Holy and holy. God of wonder. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, yeah. the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, and come on, let's lift up our voices, whoa! wonders beyond a galaxy you are holy you are holy and holy the universe the universe declares your majesty you are holy oh one more time and god of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy and holy the universe the universe declares your majesty you are holy holy and God of wonders beyond a galaxy 
One more time. God of wonder. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy. Holy. Yes, Lord. We declare, the universe declares, huh. all creation declares, your majesty. Oh, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you never change us. And we bow, we bow, we bow, we bow. We bow to the Holy One. We bow to the Holy God. We bow to the Holy God. We bow to you, O oh God. May we never lose. May we never lose our wonder, our fear, our awe. We worship you today, O oh Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. I feel like there's there's a word. If you have a word, just say. If you have the word of interpretation, no one like me yes as you have declared and proclaimed I am holy yes. but in my holiness I invite you my church I invite you to partake of my holiness you too set yourself apart you are not of this world yes you are in this world but you are different because you identify with me be holy for I am holy and do not fear do not be afraid 
as the world is afraid of the word holy. For by my spirit, by the power of my word, you are destined to be like me. Yes. For I've designed you, created you to be in my image. But sin, but sin, but sin has separated you in some way. Now call upon the name of my son Jesus. The name Jesus, for I have sent him to you because I love you. And now that you have my life in you by my spirit, be transformed into the likeness of my son Jesus. Be holy, for he is holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for my spirit is holy. I am the holy triune God. Fix your eyes on my son Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. And in the end, it shall be a holy, victorious, glorious end for eternity. Prepare your hearts now. Prepare your minds. Prepare your bodies. Be holy. for your presence in this place without you God this songs are just songs and so thank you for that word reminding us that we have to be holy for you are holy and so Lord we lift you up in this place and we glorify your name we worship you Lord in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. And let's pray for our tithes and offerings. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and pray. Lord, we cannot outgive you. You are the owner of everything. And Lord, we pray for our tithes and offerings today that you'd bless every penny oh lord that will be given that it would be used for the glory of your name and for the forcefully advancement of your kingdom bless these tithes and offerings oh lord in jesus name amen let us welcome our pastor pastor no Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Just close your eyes one more time. Hallelujah. Father, the wonder of your might the wonder of your love, the wonder of your grace can only be found, Lord God, when we find ourselves alone with you. It is when we have this moment with you that we begin to truly see 
the wonder of your love. For Lord God, your creation declares your majesty. Your word says that the stars shine bright, Lord, your glory, that the trees and the mountains, Lord God, declare your glory. They worship you, Lord God, but unless our hearts, unless we personally worship you in spirit and in truth, unless, Lord, we have tasted your presence alone, then we will not be able to share, Lord God, the wonders of your power and might like that of the creation that you have made. May it begin with us, Lord God, alone with you. Because then, Lord God, it is there that you begin to also mold our lives to be in your likeness and image. Because the more we are like Jesus, the more that we will see your power and your might. The more that we follow your son, the more that you are revealed, your power and grace is revealed in us. Let it not be, Lord, that we only worship you with our lips, but Lord God, that we worship you with our hearts, that we are authentic in our worship, Lord God, for that is what you seek for, Lord God, a life of worship, not just by our vocals and our raising up of hands, but our lives. Thank you, God. Thank you for this beautiful worship. Thank you for the prophecy. Thank you for your presence. You are holy. You are holy. And Father, bless uh, this message that I'm about to share. Lord, speak to our hearts. You know everyone going through the needs of everyone here today. You know the emptiness. You know the questions they're asking. You know the degree of their faith and their struggles and their walk with you. Speak mightily to them, Lord. May they leave this place knowing that they, you've spoke to them. You gave them instructions. Lord, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. So have it your way now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, God is holy. So be holy. So be holy. All right? Now I don't just repeat it after me. Make it real, make it, you know, let it be sincere from your hearts, all right? And the only way we can be holy is if we walk more and more with Christ, in Christ, for Christ, through Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Has that clock changed? It's, it's 12 o'clock. Okay. Okay. It looks like it's 10. Right. It's, it's 12 o'clock there. So, You know, when we worship God, the difference of our worship in this church, uh, this is not my message, but the difference of our worship in this church is we really are spirit-led spirit-led we don't just sing the songs if you come here early you would hear the practices they just go all over the place but once showtime starts once we work once everyone's here and we worship it's a whole different thing the spirit of god starts to take care of all the mistakes all of the struggles that we have during practice the holy spirit takes care of it what you hear is now the holy spirit taking care of every flaw you may not know but uh, if you come here early and listen to our practice you'd say oh my gosh it's truly the grace of God it's true the spirit and the reason why we repeat songs is because sometimes when we go through one song you don't get it yet but when we repeat it finally your mind is getting in tune to the to the lyrics and then you said oh now I'm beginning to understand the lyrics 
we get to a point where now the lyrics becomes your prayer to God. All these songs is your prayer to God in the melody of music. Where it becomes now you are singing it from your heart, not just repeating it. And that's why we repeat the songs. And then after that, we praise God, thanks for thank Him for everything. And then we come to that portion of worship where now it's all about the holiness and the power of God. Not so much of the good things He's done in our lives and the healing and all the provisions. But now we're in now God's majesty is what we're praising. It's, it's Him now. Now what He gave, so much more, but who He is, His holiness. All right, and that's when we went down. That's it's like a it's like a plane, a, a glider, and there's a main plane, and the plane pulls the glider, and this main plane is the worship team, and he pulls us or you into the sky, and sometimes we need to pull you because through the week, through the days. You may be going through some very difficult times where you struggled to worship God. You're struggling because of whatever reason, bad news, whatever it is. And then you just, we pull you to where now you're engaging with God. And the songs of praise and the worship becomes your song to God. It becomes personal. And then after that, the plane releases you. That, that cable and now you're alone it's now you we want you to, to get to the point where you're not following the worship leader now you are on your own worshiping singing the songs but now it's you singing and you're now by yourself gliding in the spirit worshiping God flowing and then we can go now to free worship where everyone just sings their song while the music is playing. Now you just go ahead and, and compose your song. Compose the song following the melody. You, now, you don't have to sing the lyrics anymore. You're singing from your heart, singing something that's it's a prayer now. And, and that's the free worship. You're free now to worship God and sing. Go ahead and make melody, make a song, make a, compose your song in that free worship as you follow the music. Boom, and now you're free, you're by yourself, you're worshiping God while the worship team is now just lingering. That's where you are, that's where we want you to be. And that's when now it's the Holy Spirit that begins to minister to you. Amen. While you're singing, now the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. And then after that, when we, when we, when we land you, we land you softly. Not, oh, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Okay, let's all sit down. No, 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 no. We slowly descend you back down. But while we're descending you, that's when we're being quiet now. When the worship leader said, let's all just linger in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Just listen. And that's when we are listening. Some are singing in tongues still. Some are still worshiping God gently. But you're gradually descending or you're still lingering there. It doesn't matter where you are. But we give that. We, become, we, we have that moment of quietness where now God begins to speak through a prophecy, through speaking in tongues and interpretation, through healing. Now it's God's turn to bless us. We bless Him with our worship. But now he begins to say, now it's my turn to bless you. You, have now, you are now in my throne. Let me speak to you. Now he's prophesied. This is where the gifts of the Holy Spirit begins to flow in this church. That's why we believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. From the very beginning, it's not Jethro who was leading. It's the Holy Spirit that was leading us through Jethro and the worship team. The Holy Spirit was taking control of the whole situation. Don't miss praise and worship, please. That's where God, it's you and God. You're not listening to a sermon, but it's you worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen. And God begins to speak to you. And then after that, like what we experienced today. And then after that, we land. That, in its brief, what praise and worship is every Sunday. Amen? Amen. So... You may be struggling. That's why the worship team is there. We're going to pull you. We're the banner. Follow the banner. We'll do the spiritual warfare. You follow us. But then it's time to carry that spear. It's time. Fight the battle. 
we let you go. You're on your own. God is now in control as you're worshiping the Lord. So every Sunday, that's how you do it. Amen? Don't say, oh, it's Pat, Brother Jeff. Oh, it's so-and-so. Nah, I can't worship. I don't like the songs. Oh, I wish he was the worship leader, so-and-so. Not nah, man. With, you, with that type of attitude, you've shut down what God's about to do in your life that morning. God ministers through testimony, through worship, through the message, through the altar call, and through just lingering fellowship after the service. Those are all part of the service. Okay? Not just to speak, not just the preaching. You want the whole, uh, whole enchilada, whole package, the whole menu, come early. Enjoy. Enjoy the salad. <laughs> okay, let's go to our message now. Let's go to our message. My topic is this, why daily devotions are important. You know, um, have you ever asked that question? Why is pastor pushing this? Why is devotion important? Or sometimes they call it quiet time. Devotional time or quiet time is synonymous. They're the same. Why is that important to me? Okay. Every believer needs a quiet time in the Lord. Every believer okay, needs a quiet time in the Lord. If Jesus himself needed to have this quiet time with his Father, then who, who do you think we are? That we don't need this quiet time while Jesus needed it? Well, you know, because Jesus had a bigger mission than me. Oh, my gosh. If that's your thinking, that's probably why you're failing. That's why you're backsliding because the devil has no, no favoritism. If he said, if I can't beat Jesus, I'm going to beat everyone who follows Jesus. Okay. And scripture says, if the master is persecuted, what about you, the slave? Matthew 26, verse 36 says this. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go there and pray. He did it time with God. Mark 1, 35 says this. Very early in the morning. Okay, very early in the morning. Excuse me. My... While it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. This is what Jesus did. Almost probably every morning he did this. We should do the same. Luke 5 verse 16. But Jesus often, okay, often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. That's the secret of why he does great mighty things throughout the day because at the very beginning he talks to the Father and asks the Holy Spirit. Before he began his ministry, he went to the wilderness and allowed the Holy Spirit to, 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 to guide him. To, to give notice to the devil. You know, you can attack me even at my weakest point. As I fast for 40 days, go ahead and attack me. But I will depend on the Holy Spirit. And the devil lost on that first attack of the devil on his life. On the 40 days fasting Jesus did in the wilderness. So when you wake up in the morning, you say, Devil, you may have so many things against me today, but I'm going to begin with God. I will depend on the Holy Spirit to guide me through the day so that no, no arrow will penetrate me. Amen? So here's four reasons why we have a daily devotion. And I pray that each one should already motivate, inspire, coerce you to do what you need to do. Devotional time. Devotional time. You need that. 
You can't depend on the church for you to grow. You got to have your personal devotional time for you to grow. And then you need the church because without the church, you cannot do it on your own. No man is an island. Okay? You can't depend on church without devotional time. No. Because then if the church is gone, where are you? If you can't talk to anyone there, where are you here? And the devil loves to attack you by yourself, not with the church. You depend the church on the church and no devotional time, you will fail. If you depend on devotional time all the time, just you, without the church, you will fail. So you need the body of Christ for God to minister to you in so many different areas of your life. Those two you need. Devotional time and the body of Christ. Of course, the Word of God, prayer, the Holy Spirit, worship, all of those are incorporated in a devotional time and in the body of Christ. Amen? All right. So number one, why you need to do devotional time? Because it's a form of worship. Devotional time is a form of worship. It's an act of worship that you do Aside from Sunday service, if you think that this is where you're going to worship is always on Sunday because the other six days of the week is it's just all work, and no play. It's you no. Know, I'll just bring my worship time on Sundays, and then after that, you don't go on a Sunday morning because you have baseball, <laughs> or or you go fishing. Well, I'm, I'm, it's an example. That the devil will say, oh, you depend on Sunday, I'll make a way that you'll miss Sunday service. Okay? When you do your devotional time every day, you are worshiping God so powerfully. Daily devotions are a form of worship. Thus, our devotions give us an opportunity to worship God. Romans 12 verse 1 says this. Therefore... I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to what? Offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Offer your lives as living. Offer your time. Offer your effort. Offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, because this is your true and proper worship. It's not singing songs. That's just a segment of worship. But the full package of worship is your life. Your life becomes uh, a, sweet nostril, a sweet aroma to the nostrils of God. Not your singing and the blending of voices, but your life is the aroma that God wants to smell. Amen? So devotional time is worship. When you do that, you are worshiping God. Not only on Sunday. It's a personal worship when it's a personal worship when the when you purposefully you intentionally take time to sit down with God to get to know Him by conversating with God, interacting with God, reading the Bible, and talking to God as the as you read the Word of God. Asking him questions. Lord, can I really do what I'm just reading now? And the Holy Spirit will say, yes. You interact with God. When you're interacting with God, that is a form of worship. We are called to be still. Be still before God. Psalms 46.10 says that. He says, be still and know that I am God. The only way you will truly know God is if you be still, agpalnaka. That's in Ilocano for uh, tumahimik ka. Is that in Tagalog? Tumahimik ka. Tumahimik ka, tumigil ka. What's it in Spanish? Be still. Oh, you know it, you know. Be still. And when you do devotion, you are being still. Okay? Be still, and I will and know 
that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted. It will begin with you. You will exalt me when you be still. You will exalt me when you are alone with me. And then can I be able to use you to exalt me in your workplace, in your city, in your nation, in the world. But it begins with you first. You think you're going to exalt me by serving in SPA? Oh man, my child, I want you to exalt me first by yourself. Because only then will you be able to bring that glory into your workplace. Because your, work, your, your church members are not going to be in your work. It's going to be you. And if you can't even spend time with me, how you be able to speak my word in the body, in, 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 in the highways, in the byways, in your workplace. Oh, so you're only strong when you're with Christians, when you are with my people on Sunday. Is that where I listen? No, it's in your stillness of you and me that I listen to you and you listen to me. Because in we, I bring you into the, light, to, to, to the workplace. It's about you and me talking so that you can minister to the people around you. And that's all part of worship. Can I hear an aray? What's aray in English? Ouch. Some will say, Amen, Pastor. Because I'm doing that. But some say, out and that's good you say out because you're being true you're being real and there's probably be more ouches than amens this morning all right there's a saying one of the best gifts we can give ourselves is time with god is that true one of the best gifts we give, not to God, to give, gifts that we give to ourselves is time with God. And you will know the preciousness of time with God is when you find yourself having cancer. When you find yourself losing your wife, when you find, your, find yourself losing your job, when you find yourself losing a possession, and now you want time with God. But it's true, good that you have, then you will say, oh my God, the beauty of time with God. Now I'm, I, I, I could deal with the storm that I'm facing because now I realize the time of God, this time with God's giving me the strength. Man, learn that every day. Not when you're in the dumps, but when you're in top everywhere, learn to be with the Lord. Amen? <sighs> Better ones, grabbing grabe. Super wow. Okay. Additionally, when we worship God daily in this way, by devotioning, devotional times, our worship grows more profound and meaningful. You know, when you worship God personally, there's a greater essence of worship when you come to the body of Christ. When you worship God individually, you have a great, there's a greater sense of, 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 of worship when you come to the, to the corporate, to the body of Christ. Try that. Worship God throughout the week by yourself and see the impact it, 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 of worship when you come on Sunday. When you just wait till Sunday to worship God, oh my God. Okay, you will experience that. But watch how when you've been worshiping in your devotional time throughout the week, and then now your spirit is so is in, is in the heart of worship, and now you come with the fellow to the body of Christ, and everyone worshiping God the same way, they come with a heart of worship. My gosh. Worship would be profound on Sundays. Amen? Amen. We just don't sing, 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 sing. Hurry up because I want to hear the pastor. Man, I tell you, in worship alone, you'll get healed. Someone came to me a long time ago and said, Pastor, I did not hear what you said. I, I got offended. I, I almost got offended. But I said, hold off, Noel, and let's just. 
because I came with a heavy heart. And that worship, there were so many things the Lord was telling me on those lyrics that I bawled and cried. And when after that worship, I was ready to go home because I found my rest and joy. I was just, and when you were singing, you were talking, Pastor, I was singing those songs in my heart because I found deliverance on those songs that we sang. I was so filled with it that I was already healed. And I was just rejoicing. I could not hear what you're saying because I was already rejoicing. I got my deliverance during the worship. I said, fine then. Okay, I, I got you. Okay. Then can you at least make the message a dessert? <laughs> no, was, instead of meat, you got your meat. In the worship. That was a joke. Yeah. yeah. Psalms 11997 says this. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. You will begin to really love God. You know, here on earth, there are so many things you love, but when you do it time and time again, you get bored with it. Magsasawa ka. You get bored with it. Except your wife. You know, that's something that's different. To you, or that you continue to love, as well as the body of Christ. The key sanct sanctified things of the Lord, marriage and the body of Christ. But everything else, you get bored with the things that you used to love. In the Word of God, when you read the Word of God, it's different. When you read it, you begin to love it more. It just, it's a spiritual thing that you begin to love it more, especially when you see how this Word of God becomes such a powerful resource when you're going through very, very painful crisis in your life. You will begin to hold on to the Word of God to the point that you would even want to keep your Bible next to you when you sleep. You put it underneath your, your pillow. There's something about the Word of God where now this is my strength. I hear my wife. I hear the, I hear the elders, but man, it's just I have to hold on to the Word of God because the Bible says thy, heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word is here to stay. My word, I will bring it to life. If there's one thing God promises that he will, he will hold on, he will fulfill his word. And anyone who stands on his word, there is going to be a dynamic move of God in his life. So hold on to the scripture. No matter, align it. Make sure that every advice given to you aligns with scripture. And if it doesn't, hold on to the scripture. To the promise of God. Amen? Amen. James 4.8 says this. Come near to God and he will come near to you. And when you do devotion, you are coming near to God. Come near to Don't wait to come near to God when we're going through problems. Come near to God all the time. Because it's when you're up here. In the good times, that the devil will attack you so that you would plummet to the bottom. When you're bottom right here, you're always praying. It's right here that you don't bow down your knees. You don't pray. It's here that the devil attacks you. That's why it's here that all the more you should spend time preparing yourself when everything is good. When life is prosperous. I'm near to God. Amen. Lastly is this, Psalms 130 verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. Man, wait on the Lord. It's part of devotional time. You come near to God. Love the word of God. Every day is a gift of God. Tell that to your brother and sister. Every day is a gift of God. Every day. And if you want to really experience the joy of every day, go to the giver of this gift. Amen? Amen. Who is that? Your husband? No. Jesus. Jesus. Number two is this. Second outline. Now let's move on. I'm, I'm going too slow. It's, okay. 
Daily spiritual exercise is as important as physical exercise. Daily spiritual exercise is as important as physical exercise. Just as physical exercise increases our strength, increases our endurance, and promotes you know, good health, overall health, same thing with spiritual exercise. But just don't, just don't get it every Sunday. No, that's not enough. Just the way that you don't, um, you don't only exercise every new year. Or you don't exercise on your birthday. Or you don't exercise when you want something from your wife. No, you, you, you don't exercise when you come from the doctor's office because you got a bad uh, report. Oh, now I'm going to exercise. No, man. Stop kidding yourself. The same way uh, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he will look at the one who does not have a devotional time. Because he knows those are easy, easy praise. Easy praise. Okay. You probably, if you have Facebook, you see, me, you see my pictures often in the mountains with pastors doing mountain biking. I do mountain biking just because... Not, don't, I hope you don't judge me that Pastor Mountain Bikes because he doesn't do much in church. Did you judge me that way? Some of you are laughing. I think you, you're guilty. Pastor has too much time. He's always... Believe me, in mountain biking, that's why I can deal with these arthritic hands. If I don't mountain bike... These fingers that are all baluktot or all curved, they hurt in the morning. And throughout the day, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't do this. So when I bike, I have to hold on to the bars or I'll, I'll, I'll fall into the cliff. And that shakes. It, 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 and then at the end of the mountain biking, I, I, it, it loosens and all that. But as long, but while I'm biking, one hour and a half to two hours of biking, I am praying. I am praying. My, my, my prayer closet is the mountains. When I'm biking, I am praying. I, man, I, I, for two hours, I'm, I, I literally pray for everything. Well, what about your alertness, Pastor? When, if you're praying, what about you know, falling off and all that. I tell you, when you're praying, all the more your senses of everything is, is heightened. When I'm going that rock garden, just rocks going down like that, and you just have to literally trust in your bike that it's going to go over those rocks, I am praying even more. Praying in tongues. I become more sense. Uh, uh, the sense is just increased. The thing is here, I keep on, and you know what? I have to exercise anyway because I have hypertension. What I'm saying is here, three things that develop when I buy mountain bike. I develop my skills. And I tell you, I could go on and on about the skills you need in mountain biking. You need to have stamina or endurance going up for miles up these mountains like that of the Black Mountain, the antenna up there in that mountain in, in Poway, as well as a mindset. you got to have a strong mindset when it says, I, because when you see the rocks and the cliffs and it's just next to it, you have to have a strong mind. I can do this. I'll go through it. You, have, you can't be afraid or your, your body will stiffen. And when your body stiffens, that's it. You can't, the agility, the ability, the, the flexibility stiffens. And everything stiffens. And now you're really going to fall. You have to have a strong mindset. And the thing with the Christian walk, you, without the devotional exercise, you will not be able to endure the onslaught of the enemy. You will not have the skills and the knowledge that the Holy Spirit imparts upon you when you're it, when your time alone with God, you will not be able to have that mindset of standing on to the word, no matter what the world is, no matter how painful your, your emotions are, that you're just holding on to the Holy Spirit. The strong mindset, just standing on God's word. Amen. When we force our attention, and sometimes we have to force ourselves to be in the presence of God because 
the flesh is against the spirit. The flesh does not want us to sit down before the Lord. We want to do other things. When we go away from the self-indulgent personal things that we have, like that of screen time, oh, I'm uh, uh, Facebook or being still, YouTube or devotional time. You know, the daily time spent with God will always bring strength to our soul. It's going to root us into the promises of God and that we would always be ready for any time crisis issues and every attack of the evil comes into our lives. Amen? You can't just say, now I'm going into my devotional time because I am being hit hard by the enemy. Life is now falling upon my life. Uh, The world is falling upon me. That's where I'm going to do my devotional time. You know what? You'll be too afraid. That you don't need, you'll be so, you'll be in a, you listen to this. You will come to a point where you'll panic. And what you have not learned uh, to develop, that you did not have this, this uh, muscle memory. You, you, if you haven't developed that, then the panic of life will cost you not to do that. All the more you're going to say, hey, help, 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 help me. And no matter how much people are imparting things on you, you are not able to hold on to it because you, 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 you want relief right away and you've not learned to establish that, 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 that foundation of just being still before the Lord. It's hard to be still before God when you're panicking. Right? When you're stressing all over the place. Believe me, I think I'm telling the truth. Some are here panicking. We may not see the difference of what a devotional time is each day, but like exercise, the impact of devotional time, you will see in the long run, especially when you're tested. There will you see the power of what you've done during those good times. You've developed stamina, you've developed endurance, you've developed a mindset uh, of holding on to Scripture. Romans 15 verse 4 says this, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance, through the endurance taught in the Scripture. See, as you read Scripture in your devotional time, you will develop that endurance. Endurance will be imparted upon you. And and the encouragement, you will be encouraged. And with this endurance and encouragement, they will provide you hope. See, in this devotional time, God will teach you how to endure. He will encourage you. So now you will have this hope to hold on when the world is about to fall on you. Romans 12, verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can you renew your mind when you don't have a devotional time? Is Sunday service only with pastors preaching will renew your mind? You think I'm renewing your mind by just listening to me every once a, once a, month, once a week? No. It's in your devotional time and in your life groups, in your Bible studies throughout the week. Keep adding to your mind, to your heart with God's word. Then you will be able to test and approve that what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect. Then you'll be able to discern where to go, what not to do, and just to hold on when the pressures of life, the crucibles of life is pushing hard on you. You can just say, Lord God, nah, I ah. I, I, I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to fall, Lord. I am standing on your word. Okay? Amen? Amen. Two more. Okay. It is essential for direction. Number three, it is essential for direction. The truth is we are not bright. Tell that to your next. The truth is you're not bright. I know it's true. The truth is you're not smart. As you think you are. Okay. God uses, remember the Bible, God uses the foolish things of the world to what? Shame the wise. 
when you think that you have it all and you have excelled, God say, my gosh, do you know where that came from? I can just snap my fingers and remove everything that you've acquired all these years, the knowledge or the possessions. You know what you're saying, build up another barn? You are a fool. Today, I will require your life. Okay. Issues will come in life when, um, and we will wonder what to do. Lord, what am I going to do now? Where should I go? Should I move on? Should I stay? Should I stay? Lord, what is your will in my life? Lord, what can, Lord, what is it that you want from this, 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 this pain? Lord, there are tons of questions. There's going to be so many life decisions and so many life problems, so many life crises, you know, and that's why we can't be caught off guard. The moment you only wake up and pray or read the Bible when life decision comes your way or life crisis comes your way, you've been caught off guard. Because when they come, and they will come, it will be so much harder to hear God, let alone obey the Lord's instructions when your emotions are freaking out, when all hell is breaking loose in your life. It is so hard to hear the Lord, or even you hear the Lord, you hear the pastor saying this, you heard this, you heard this, but it's even harder to obey when your emotions are all over the place. When you're crying, bawling, and you're about to lose something, it's just hard. And then, that's a time you, okay, it's, you will still be able to hear the Lord. But then you're going to regret it and wish that you have learned to walk close to God. You see, because it's much easier to learn the, tr the power and the truth of God and, the, and everything else when everything is kind of okay, that you're not being pressured by life, that you're, you're, you're okay. That's when you prepare. That's when, when I was in the Marines, we were always practicing like tomorrow or tomorrow, tonight will be warfare. We would always clean our guns. We would always be running every day, day and night. We would be running as it man. I said, well, we are like mga tanga. I mean, in, in English, we were, uh, we're, we're, like, we're like fools. We've done this for a whole week, and we're going to keep doing it. And the, and the sergeant and the, and the gunner, gunny, gunny and every one of them said, we train you as if, if we leave tonight, you're ready. And that when we bring and when we are fighting under the hot sun or in, in a tropical storm, you're not going to be complaining, man, I should have, I, I, can't, you, I can't shoot with, when, 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 when it's all stormy. I can't shoot when it's too hot. I can't do it. No, no. We're training you at every area so that when we're there, there's no complaining. You just hear it and obey. What we tell you, you obey. There's no more complaining. You've been there, done that. We've trained you hard. That's why we're the first to fight. We're the first to go because we're so ready. The same thing with the Marine. I mean, with, with us. Train yourself now at the peacetime level when everything's good or even if there's a little slight stress. Learn now because when it comes, when war comes, when the battleground is called, you will be ready not say, oh, I don't know how to do my devotion. Oh, uh, the words are coming to my heart, but it's hard to hold on to it. It's hard to stand on God's word when everything's happening. It's, uh, I'm too, I'm too, my mind is too mixed up. It's, it's too separate. It's, don't, man, I tell you. Am I convincing you? Amen. Learn while it's peaceful. Don't learn when it's all, that when you're there. Someone who's learned the lesson will come and grab you and pull you out. But what if there was no one there to pull you out? And uh, I want to give this story, but it's going to... Can you give me a few minutes? To, I, I, I'm going to pass my time. But I'm a corpsman. I was a corpsman, in the, in a Navy corpsman. And when I found out that I was going to be attached for four years with the Marines, 
He said, okay, Lord, it's better than uh, standing on the ship for eight months while it's rolling. I, I can't, I'd rather get sunburned than seasick. But uh, this is what we were trained to do as medics before they completely receive us in, in, in the Marines. We had to pass this test. We're in a, a, a Marine would walk ahead of me, but he would already be, he's already um, attached with this broken limb. It's plastic, but when you, they attach it to your body, it's as if you, it's, you have a big hole in your gut or that your, your bone is sticking out or you, they put it right here, and the eyeball just came out. Profuse bleeding put here, and there's this bunch of water. We don't know what they're going to put on that person. And that person now is over there lying somewhere in, 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 in this place where it's covered by bushes. Where it's, uh, and then the test is this. You will, they're going to put all this, this, this smoke screen, green, white, red, and you can't see anything. And then the, the Marines will be shooting this blank, blank uh, um, guns, blank, blank M16s, all, of the, all over the place. And now, all, when you approach, that's the time you can see that person lying down, a Marine lying down with whatever they decided to put on his body. And then you go there, and then after that, the gun starts. And then all of the smoke. Bah, bah, bah. And then when you come closer, you see, oh, excuse me, I, I just got to tie my shoe here. Because I might just literally fall and, on my knees. You see, I would see him there. I would go. And then after that, all these, these the, the corpsmen's, these marine, uh, these, 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 the, the senior Corman's now that's already in the Marines. They would say, Dog, 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 help me. And then after that, people would be commanding, Hey, da, 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 da. there's voices, there's guns, there's all of this. And now there's this Marine. And now I see it. Now I have to, in, in three minutes, in three minutes, I have to assess that Marine, patch him up, and drag him to a bush. In three minutes. So as I see it, what, what am I going to do first? A bleeding, uh, pass a hole on his stomach, uh, ABC, uh, airway, breathing, circulation. What am I going to do? And for the, the first time, I was shocked. I, I was able to finish it, but in about seven minutes. Pap, 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 pap. And after I had to pull him, after that, we had to keep three times. You have given three times. But finally, on the third time, I passed. Within less than three minutes, I was able to patch that person, everything, and pull him to safety. While everything was firing and you could not see because of all the smoke, you could barely see that person because the, they would put the, 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 the smoke right next to that person. But I was so ready. I was so pumped up that I was ready to go to war that night. I was ready to save lives. And we kept training that way. I tell you the same way. We are in the last days. We are in the last days. A rapture could come anytime. You could die anytime. Someone's dying next to you. You got to know what to do. The only way to do that is grow, learn to be with the Lord. Amen. Okay, so devotional times provide interaction with God so that your love for God will remain fresh. It's in your devotional time that he will keep your love your, for him fresh and that he will keep your ears tuned in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need those to be able to hear the Spirit of God, to be able to keep being passionate for, the go, the, for God when things go haywire. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I tell you, God has plans, but that's, it's not there. It doesn't end there. God has a plan for us, and He wants to 
to fulfill that plan in our lives. And the only way he's able to do that is if you just remain still for a moment, listen to him, clearly hear his voice, clearly know his instruction. And in that stillness, your passion increases, and that passion helps you to obey God. All of these things happen in the devotional time. Amen? It's easier to obey when you love God. The more you have passion for the Lord, the more you will say, yes, Lord, I will. The more that you will step by faith, knowing that he will correct your path if you made a mistake. You will do it. Great passion by spending time with God. Okay? Lastly, it will pay off in times of need. Your devotional time will pay off. When we fill our hearts... Um, when we fill our hearts with spiritual truth, with God's word, then we are truly preparing for anything that will happen in our lives, whether it be physical or spiritual attacks or emotional problems. We will be prepared, okay? When the devil tries to lie, and he will lie, you'll be able to discern immediately a lie from the truth. John 8, 31 says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will, what? Set you free. Might tell you, when you are able to discern what's right and wrong, that in itself is already a game changer. When you know that you should not be entertaining this thought, when you know that this is a no-no, and even though my feeling says, go for it, when I know that's wrong, follow the word of God. God, follow the truth. Stand on God's word. Amen? And God will see you through. Don't be deceived by your emotions and your desires. Okay. If you're struggling, trust in God. Okay. If we're with Him every day, struggling will not be an issue. If we are with God every day, struggling will not. First Peter 1.8 says this, Though you have not seen him, you loved him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible uh, and glorious joy. Though you do not see him, what? You love God. We won't see God, but in the devotional time, when we have our time with God, you will begin to love God. Even though we don't see Him physically, you will begin to believe in Him because of just, uh, you will just sense your growth and faith as you spend time with God. And all of this begins to bring you joy, even in the midst of a broken heart. Even in the midst that you've lost someone you love so much, you will be steady. You will be at peace. Romans 10 verse 17 says this, Consequently, faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of God. You see, by devotional time, when you read the word, you pray and you worship, faith increases. Believing God increases. Passion increases. All of that increases. So you're so ready, whether you're here or when the circle goes down here or here, you are ready. Amen? For those who have, who have anxiety attacks, those who have, have been hit with, with depression and, and fear, read and meditate on the Word of God. That's, that's, how, that's, that's the best that you can do. Okay? I would rather that you hang on to the Word of God than listen to a PhD who does not use anything in the Word of God or any God or God to even encourage you. He uses scientific methods. Man, stick here first. Let this be your priority first and the Holy Spirit guiding you. And the Holy Spirit's telling you, okay, follow so-and-so, but don't deviate. Follow that instruction. All right? Now you say, Pastor, well, I don't have time to do devotional time. Because when I wake up in the morning, I, I literally, exactly at the time, I have to take a shower and I'll do this and I'll do that. And, you know, well, you know, that's okay. That's okay. 
When you're, pr when you're driving, pray. Pray at least. Play, uh, play music. Worship God when you're driving. If you can read the Bible in lunchtime or in the afternoon or even more in even the evening, do it. Because you know what? Especially for you who are anxious. Especially for us who are fearful. It's good when you read the Bible before you go to sleep. Read a promise of the Lord before you go to sleep. Why? Then you will enter into your sleep with, with, with assurance that God is in control of the world, that God is in control of your situation. God loves you. Because when you go to sleep carrying a load, a pressure, a worry, you will, be, you will dream that. And now the devil has tried to hurt you physically. He will now try to even mess with you in your nightmares, in your sleep. Co protect your mind by, by, by standing on the word and pray before you go to sleep. And then when you wake up, bring what you've learned that evening and into that day. Until such time that you read the word again that day or that night. But at least bring a word in your life. Alright? Especially before you go to sleep. Protect your mind. Because it becomes vulnerable for the devil to input things, especially things that you've been thinking of all day. Philippians 4 verse 7 says this, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. The peace of God. And you will have that peace when you hold on to the promise of God. Let that peace now immerse. Let it, let it just, just, just fill you before you go to sleep. If you wake up in the morning, you can read and let that peace fill you as you face the day. All right? A devotional time can be, I'm just moving on, what kind of, what, what type of devotions can you do? A devotional time can be a devotional book. There's so much in, in Amazon or in your bookstore. Get a devotional book that you follow each day or you read the Word of God with a highlighter. If you're going to read the Word of God, get a highlighter, please, and a pen. Highlight. Show me your Bible and I will show you how serious you are in your Christian walk. If your Bible is clean, it's like, oh my gosh, what have you been doing? Highlight it. Put a square right on it. Put a date, everything, right? Different colors. Highlight. Meditate on it. Memorize some scripture. If you love the scripture, put it on an index card so that whenever you're attacked, immediately you read that scripture. We pull out some key index cards that these are the scriptures I'm going to, I memorize. I'm, this is, this is going to keep me awake, keep me strong in the Lord. Okay. Or perhaps go and buy a one, um, uh, one year through the Bible book that you just constantly read through that the chapter, just, just one year through the Bible. Go for that. Or there might be times that you're not just, you're, 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 God is just calling you to just pray and worship. You're not going to read, just pray and worship. Or it can be, take, you, 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 you just find what you're comfortable with. Read a devotional book because it has verses. Go to the Bible or look for, get a book called the Book of Promises. All of them, the promises for worry, for depression. And just meditate on one, one scripture each day. Just follow it. Memorize it. Think about it all throughout the day. One scripture or two scriptures. Or you read the one year, um, read the Bible through the year book. Or, or combine them all together. Okay? Pick a verse. Whatever you choose to do, intentionally do it. Meaning to say, I'm not going to lose a day. I'm going to put it alarm, put it in an alarm in my phone book. I'm going to put it in my calendar. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be intentional. I'm, and if you miss, don't, for, don't, don't feel guilty. Don't feel condemned. If you missed it, that's okay. Ask forgiveness and move on. And do it again the, and, and continue the next day. But don't miss. Try not to miss a day. Is it always in the morning? It's good. But if it's done in your first breakfast uh, at work or your first break, then so be it. Lastly is this. All right. James 4.8 says this. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, sinners. Purify your hearts, double-minded. Okay. When I, in court, I backslide so many times when I was a Christian. But when, it's when I started my devotional time 
that that's when I saw a radical change in how I faced my problems, how I, I dealt with my spiritual walk, how, how I was able to be, discern uh, God's direction, cut down so much losses, cut down so much painful experiences. It was in my devotional time that I found more of God's direction concerning a decision, prepared me for what the devil was about to do that day. Praise God, but the, the Bible, the, read, the verse I read that morning was for that issue. My God, r radically change your life by devotional time. John Oderberg said this, the main measure of your devotion to God is not your devotional time or the consistency of your devotional time. Let not that be your, the measure, but the measure of your devotional time is simply your life. What has your life transpired? How has it transpired? How has it been transformed when you began your devotional time with God? The measurement is your life, not how consistent you are with the devotional time, but now the impact of your life, the impact of the time, devotional time in your life. Your life is what's going to happen. Now look at another one said this, that the true devotion means becoming the hand. Okay, the question, the question of the first is this, what does your life look like if it's going to be the measure of your if, of, of of your devotion to God. How does your life look like? Well, here it is. Your life, your life should look like this. True devotion means becoming the hand of the divine. Whatever comes your way, you will know how to transform it into something beautiful. Amen? Amen. Your life is all about trans, uh, touching people's lives. The hand of the divine. Whatever comes your way, you will be able to transform that situation to make it beautiful. Something of a lesson learned. Amen? God's good? I know this is a lot. So you just uh, listen to it again in Facebook. All the outlines is in Facebook or in our website. Okay, repeat it. Follow the outlines. All right? Amen? Oh, gosh. My wife's saying, stop it now. <laughs> yeah. I have to share this joke. And my, my, my look at my wife giving me a, a bad look. You want, you want to see signs and wonders in church? Look at my wife giving signs to me and look at me wondering what she's saying. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, again, thank you so much for this beautiful time. Father, forgive me if I went overboard. But Lord, this message really is so important. So Lord, help us to remember and to apply everything. We are so careful, Lord, to give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, one instruction is this. Uh, for those who are going to be baptized in water this afternoon, if you're still deciding to, to ba be baptized in water, all you need to ask yourself is this. Did you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And if it says yes, then you should be baptized in water. There's no ifs and buts. The only way you're not going to be baptized in water is, is if you're sick today or you just can't handle the cold water. Okay? But please, jump in because uh, it's a, it, to fulfill all righteousness. To live a righteous life is to fulfill all the examples of Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus Christ said, John, John the Baptist baptized me right now. Fulfill all righteousness. It has been said. It has been done. And now, please, uh, you too, if you're born again and you haven't been baptized or you've been baptized before in water but you want to again do it just to, be, just to make sure, then do it. All right? It's not a requirement for being a member of this church. It's not a requirement for being saved. But it is part of God's call that you be baptized in water. I will explain more of that at Pastor Rick's place. It's going to be at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. 
And so you could go out and eat, eat right now, then you can go straight there. And uh, what are you going to bring? Just bring your towel, bring dry clothes, okay? Wear dry, I mean, darker uh, clothes so that way if it gets wet and it's, it's not transparent, all right? And I will explain more about the baptism in water, all right? There is that sign sheet there. Put your name there uh, if you're going to be baptized this afternoon. Put, it's right there on, at the table behind. All right, I'm sorry uh, I went uh, too long, but uh, uh, be blessed this week. God's good? Okay. Yes, brother, fix it. <laughs>